And uh, about the world game. And about Ericsson's 40th anniversary. All three topics. And I very much appreciate you spending your early evening here, and I hope I can answer your questions. Give you some idea of what Ericsson is up to. Now, some of you were at the World Game last April. Galia. Oh, wow. That's six of you. Seven. So you know a good deal about some of the topics I'm going to bring up. Uh, I want to talk about the climate crisis we're in, for one thing. And it's really developed since last April. Uh, I want to talk about what Ericsson is doing towards that. And projects you may have. Ways that we can make a big difference on planet Earth. Because to be a coach right now, and I think most of you are coaches, is one of the most important callings that we can have. Uh, Ericsson is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. And up to about eight years ago, that looked like a wonderful thing. Ah, yes, there was talk about ecology damage and problems. But it looked like we could handle it. And that uh, countries were moving ahead and having conversations and attempting to find a way through to the future for our children. Uh, and it looked like coaching would be one of the biggest uh, real gifts that we could give. It still is. But right now, uh, the necessity is speeding up. Now, uh, how many of you have been following, really following the issues that have been really uh, hitting the world in terms of ecology? How many? Okay. So some of you have not. And I'll, I'll fill you in on a little bit of information later. We'll keep the screen on and, and talk about what climate change means and why it's an incredibly important time for us to be coaches in the world and for us to really have discussions with people as leaders uh, about uh, the world our children is, are moving into. See, all of us who are over 30 live in uh, a particular sphere of time. Uh, all the six-year-olds on the planet, all the six-year-old people on the planet are younger. They're going to move into a world that we won't have any part of. Now, this is a world that we've created, that we're responsible for. But we're going to be passing it on to them. 
And they uh, didn't create the crisis that's now here on the planet. But they'll have to handle it. They'll be the ones living with it. They'll be the ones that have to sort out what to do for the generation that comes after that, our grandchildren. Our ch grandchildren want to wake up on planet Earth and have a world that has lots and lots of um, different kinds of ecology, plants and animals, butterflies, insects, all the things that we love. And right now the planet is going through the, what's called the sixth great extinction. Many, many species are disappearing very, very fast. <coughs> and uh, we can still fix it. And that's what I want to talk with you about. So uh, we can fix it as coaches. We can fix it as leaders and as individuals. And it requires a lot more attention than any of us are happy to give. We'd like the world to go on as usual and things to be workable. There have been lots of generations before us that said, oh, these are terrible times. The world's never had times like this before. But they were wrong. Now is the time. Now is the time which calls us to be uh, much bigger, much more capable than we ever thought possible. People, we've got one generation to fix this. One generation. Now, why am I saying this? Uh, well, first of all, let's just talk about what's happened recently. I come from Vancouver, Canada, a city that lives, uh, has for years been rainforest. Trees every direction. And for two summers, shrouded in smoke from forest fires, 750 forest fires burning at a time. 50. Uh, all burning at one time and the smoke uh, floating uh, over Vancouver. This has never happened before. I've lived in this city all my life. Now, uh, as the summer progressed, Siberia started to burn. How many of you know about that? In the uh, very north country, the uh, permafrost was melting. Uh, permafrost? Did you get that? Okay. And uh, the fires were so severe there that uh, there was huge areas of smoke all over the uh, Siberian area. 
Then it was followed by Brazil. The rainforest in Brazil. And again, huge fires. And now, I mean, a month and a half ago, it was in Indonesia. And then Australia. And Australia, the fires burned a piece of land. It's still burning. The size of South Korea. And that area has sent smoke, so much smoke, into the atmosphere that climatologists say it's uh, changing the climate even now. So it's all accelerating. And uh, we frankly need to move quite fast. Because planet Earth is hitting a tipping point. Now, what can we do? Uh, first of all, we need to talk to people. Most of us are coaches. We work in corporations. We work with corporate leaders. We need to gather our courage as coaches and invite people and teams into the conversations. We need to share the urgency of this time. Because frankly, most people haven't had their attention on it. It's only now, suddenly people are waking up. And with the waking up, many people feel uh, dissociated and a little bit anxious, like there's nothing I can do. So all the things that happen when people feel very small in the face of something big, they tend to uh, drive people into passivity at the very time when we need activity. So this is where coaching comes in. This is where we can make a big difference. To assist people to really ask the question, what do we want now? What do we want for our children? What are we willing to do right now to have the planet recover from this? Now, it hasn't looked like there was much we could do. And that's been part of the discouraging area. It looked like there were so many balls to juggle. Where do you start? So a, a group of us got together, and we've been studying this situation for quite a while. Now, on an individual level, what can we do? We can plant trees, people said, or eat a plant-based diet. That makes a difference. We can travel less and think twice about buying a car or get an electric car. Uh, all the things that could, in fact, stop the release of fossil fuels into the environment, because that's what's doing it. 
There's a, maybe we will show the video here. A lot of initiatives in a lot of areas. Uh, but gradually over the last 100 years, a, a thick film of carbon is now uh, in the uh, atmosphere. Let's just take a moment. There are all sorts of factors. This is uh, a year ago we put this together. You all know that the sea ice is breaking off very quickly. 40% of the earth has got cities, 40% of the cities on the earth are on the ocean. And the chances of the ocean rising up to about this level higher in the last, in the next 30 years are very great. So that will flood all our cities. There's been big changes in the uh, different areas of the planet. It getting, it's now one point four degrees hotter than it was a hundred years ago. And um, the, la the last four years have been the hottest that have ever happened on planet Earth. Let's just keep going here. So some of the, the, the what happens when, oh, look at that, now you see it grow. What happens uh, when that temperature goes up is that um, for each degree, 7% more water goes into the atmosphere. Um, and that water comes down as hurricanes or big storms. And meanwhile, in the dry areas, look at the, the date changes. The dry areas just get a lot drier. And that means the growing areas, where we grow our food, are drying out. The water comes down in big floods elsewhere. But I, I go to Africa, I go to um, Middle East. Oh, and whoa, stop. <laughs> we saw it now. And in uh, the year I was in Saudi Arabia, that was a year ago, uh, meanwhile in Brazil, one day they got six inches of rain so that the houses were falling off the hills. And in Indonesia, they're just having huge floods right now, plus all sorts of other crises. Now, look at this chart, it's quite interesting. It says, how can we reduce our carbon footprint? Now, see the line that goes up and down there? That's 400,000 years of temperature change. And each one of those uh, low points is an ice age. So that's 400,000 years. At that point, it crossed the line beyond 400,000 years. It crossed the, the, see the 400,000? So it went up above that line. 
And at the top up there, that's the current level. Now look where we've gotten to. It's way beyond anything we've ever had on planet Earth before. Now what's creating that? Is carbon. See that red film there? Uh, that's waste products from our smokestacks, from our coal, fired plants, from our steel mills, steel um, factories. From everything, we're throwing our waste into the atmosphere. Every car. And the really disturbing news is that the amount of carbon we're putting in the atmosphere has doubled in the last 10 years. So this is 1950 level. This picture was done five years ago. That level is going up very, very fast. And uh, Notice that the heat comes down, it goes up again, but it bounces back to planet Earth. So the expectation is that it'll reach about two degrees hotter in about 10 years, maybe sooner, with all the smoke. Now, if it goes that high, we lose all the coral in the ocean, we lose most of the fish, we lose a lot of the insects, most of the insects. You know there's a crisis in bees. And we need bees to pollinate the plants. People, this is a real crisis we're in. And this is the world our children are moving into. Now, what are some of the things that are relevant to us? Trees sequester carbon. They hold carbon. And they produce oxygen in the air. So people say plant more trees. Not quite so easy. But one of the things we've discovered, perhaps you've heard about it, is that a patch of spirulina, it's about a, a, as big as this area here, is worth 400 trees. So Ericsson is starting projects with spirulina. And we're also starting a variety of other coaching projects for our 40th anniversary. Now we're pretty excited about these projects. We think they can make a big difference. And that's why I'm standing here right now. Uh, first of all, about the spirulina project. Do you know what spirulina is? Those little green tablets, they tell you to take them for your health. Spirulina is good food. It's 60% protein. And it's... Um, 
very interesting because it can live off waste products, particularly carbon in smokestacks. And so if you put carbon, if you put this in the smokestacks of uh, uh, big buildings, like a, say a cement factory, carbon grows off the smoke from the cement factory. Now, with very dirty smoke, that doesn't produce food. <laughs> We wouldn't eat that. Car we wouldn't eat that spirulina. But in 24 hours, it produces as much as I showed you. 400 trees. And that can then be driven out to farmers' fields and used as uh, fertilizer. And it's much, much better fertilizer than uh, the fertilizers that are now made out of fossil fuels, which also then are bad for the earth. So uh, we're quite excited about supporting spirulina. And uh, there's a lot of businesses that if they understood this, might be willing to work with such a project. Now, there's different levels and kinds of spirulina. Uh, we're working with the University of British Columbia, that's in Canada, my city, Vancouver. And uh, in uh, this uh, university, a whole group are, have developed a type of spirulina that takes only 24 hours to grow to its maximum. Before this, it took about a week to get that 400, 400 trees worth of spirulina. And it's almost ready to go. So a group of us, some of you may know some of these people. How many of you know Peter Stefani? He's one of them. Uh, myself. Paul Gossin. Do you know Paul Gossin? Uh, Rosa Tchakova. Do any of you know Rosa? She's creating health coaching. They're all coaching this uh, group that are producing spirulina. And you all know who Bill Gates is, right? Bill Gates has proposed a game. He said any group that can show a way to reduce carbon uh, on the planet, just 3%, uh, pardon me, that's uh, one eightieth of the, what we're throwing into the air every year, eightieth. Uh, one over 80. Uh, he'll fund $50 million to really uh, move that project ahead. So we're starting to talk to these people about how this project could succeed through 65 coaching schools. 
Because we can take this to a lot of leaders. And we can start projects. Now this grows, spirulina grows very well in something called a bag. It only costs about $50. And it can grow in the exhaust fumes of your own home. Yeah, from your own, uh, now I know here you have central heating, don't you? So you wouldn't be able to do it. But in many countries, each home has its own heating unit. Uh, we can take it to India. Now, spirulina grows best in warm places. So, very big, dirty cities like Delhi. Uh, if every home where they're burning coals, they use a bag of spirulina, they can clean the environment, the atmosphere. So it's got a huge potential to clean the smokestack of a large cement factory. It's more like $50,000. But that's doable. That's not outrageous in the time of climate change. Now, there's even more good news. If you feed uh, spirulina, put it in the cat feed of cattle, it cleans up about 98% of the methane that cows produce. Now, I don't know if you know there's a billion cows on the planet. Uh, seven and a quarter billion people and a billion cows. And they produce a lot of methane. So this could be this could be Bill Gates's game. Uh, and even more interesting. If you are sick, particularly with Diabetes. Now, diabetes is a very interesting illness. Uh, not a lot of things affect it. And people, it's the worst illness in the world for deaths. More people on planet Earth are dying of diabetes than anything else right now. Spirulina affects the way it actually helps people heal from diabetes. So one of our team members is a medical doctor, Rosa Tekova. And she's busy working out how we can promote this. And use coaching as a methodology to get this out into the world. Now, I'm just telling you about our 40th anniversary projects. We decided to be very practical. <laughs> Planting trees is wonderful, it looks good, but at we will, right now we need very practical projects. Now, there's a bunch of other projects we're doing. And these are all projects that need teams. 
Uh, one of them being um, developed by Christopher Cook. How many of you know Christopher Cook? Один из проектов был разработан Кристофером Куком. Кто знает Кристофера Кука? Yay! Mm -hmm. Okay, Christopher. Christopher is, uh, and we're working with him. It had, we've created a category called ecology coaching. Now he's working particularly with farmers to help them uh, really bring back the health of the land. Sometimes some people are saying we've only got 60 more growing seasons on planet Earth. Because the land is being destroyed so badly. So uh, one of the things we can do is ecology coaching both for people working with the land but people working with ecology anywhere asking the question how can we live a sustainable life on this planet so our children have a future now this is a big question because right now the amount of stuff that the wealthy countries have, and I'm including all of us here, uh, is, see, it would take four worlds for every human being on planet Earth to have the lifestyle that we have. And I'm talking about all the people in Africa that are looking ahead and saying, oh boy, we're going to soon have cell phones and everything everybody else has. We're using up the planet's resources hugely. It's not just fossil fuels. And I know Kazakhstan is a fossil fuel country. But it's all the iron ores and the uh, other resources. It's the wood. It's all the necessary stuff that could foster a future our lifestyle is costing a lot and we don't even notice because we're living in a consumer culture based on economic economics where the fear is oh, unemployment if our GDP doesn't go up there might be unemployment GDP gross domestic product and so this cycle keeps getting worse and worse see in actual fact we need to live with less we need to change our metaphors for what it means to be human it's time for different metaphors. What does status mean? In, in the Western cultures right now, it means owning a lot of stuff and displaying that you do. What if, in fact, it wasn't status we aimed at, but inner growth and inner development and the capacity to live a life with 
love and purpose, wouldn't that sustain us much better than destroying the planet as we are doing right now? Okay, now I'm, I'm talking a little bit about uh, the necessity to change. And all over the world people are waking up to this. And they don't know what to do about it, coaches. No, they don't know what to do. So it pr it's producing a kind of anxiety. And when people have anxiety without knowing what to do, well, that creates problems. It creates depression and mental illnesses and uh, all sorts of things. People need coaching. We need to assist them to find a vision and a way to make this future real that can give a life to our children. We need the opening to a whole new order of meaning and purpose on the planet. Uh, a world shift is needed. And I want to say that we are the ones that need to make it happen. Uh, when any civilization loses its story of development, it dies. See, we've been losing our story of development, our vision and purpose as humanity. It's all become a consumer society. Uh, when stories become too narrow, the hero's journey isn't there anymore. Our dreams for building what's possible isn't there anymore. Some of you know uh, the success model from Module 4. Who's taken Module 4 here? Some of you have. Not every, uh, quite a few. Do you remember the model that included four key areas of creating success? So one area is achievement. Uh, we need to experience that what we do makes a difference. One area is creating happy moments with each other, shining moments, taking time for each other as human beings. One area is developing our creativity and really saying yes to our purpose. See, right now, we're living in momentous times and everyone in this room has the capacity to make a huge difference. The world needs your creativity and your leadership. But there's one more area. If we want to experience the fulfillment of our life, the purpose of our life, 
We need to be willing to create a legacy. And I say that we are the ones that can do that now in a very big way. I invite you to really take on this big adventure the world game <coughs> with um, either joining one of our projects and I'll name about 10 of them or creating one of your own uh, the one you mentioned earlier is a big project. Plastic is a huge issue right now. All the, uh, there's an area the size of Texas called the plastic dump in the middle of the Pacific. I'm not using plastic bottles anymore at all. I'm using thermoses. Because uh, human beings don't know how to get rid of their waste at this point. And the whales swallow it, the birds, the seabirds feel it, feed it to their babies and the babies die. So that's a, a great one. But let me tell you about some others. Uh, some of you may have heard we had, there's coaching projects all over. This is a wonderful legacy. Uganda, uh, a group of trainers uh, brought coaching to Uganda and started coaching teachers there. Simply as a gift. And they're doing team coaching in Uganda. Uh, they're doing a teacher training in Brazil, in the favelas. You know what a favela is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so Ericsson Brazil has taken on this project in a big way. Uh, there's teacher training going on all over Russia, as I understand. Um, are any of you from Russia? Okay. So uh, look and see how that project is going. In Indonesia, they're building, uh, they're assisting entrepreneurs who are working with windmills for the small villages. But what are the new projects? Well, uh, we want to create a breakthrough result as soon as possible with projects that can be scaled up and sort of spread out around the world. And projects that might be self-financing, not hugely expensive. And that people can scale up on their own, can grow them on their own. So, what are some of these? I talked about the, the Spiralina project. We're just starting to start that. Uh, the patents are just coming through for the spirulina that I was telling you about. But we hope to have that be a big project this year and we'll invite as many people as we can. Uh, Christopher Cook is doing uh, a project with a production of wool. <coughs> Production of wool because sheep can really revitalize the land. That's pretty interesting. Now, 
Another thing we're doing is as much as possible talking to people. That is a project in itself. The coaching school in Latvia has had a big impact on the government of Latvia by being willing to go out and have team meetings in all sorts of companies. And just talk like I am right now about the crisis and how important it is to start now. So coaching a mind shift in the culture. That means starting to start with what you know, getting information from the internet. You're all welcome to my set of about 50 PowerPoints. You're welcome to have them. I didn't show them tonight, but you may all have them. Now, what we're attempting to do is create measurements for all this. The more we can measure things, the better. Well, one way is to note the equivalent of Say uh, one meal of lamb or beef is worth 91 miles of gasoline in a car. Uh, a meal of lentils. Lentils, they're little beans. <laughs> it is, it's worth two miles of gasoline in a car. See, the more you understand the measurement, the better. Uh, one seat in an economy plane from Vancouver to China costs 700 million, uh, I've forgotten, uh, uh, <laughs> That's a lot of carbon, 7 million tons of carbon. That's the equivalent of a year of living in a city for one of us. Driving to work every day. So one trip across the ocean costs that much. See, I may not be traveling much anymore. We're attempting to create, Ericsson is attempting to create as much as we can online courses. And uh, I'm, I'm very sorry to say this, because I love to travel. I love to visit our communities, be part of this larger developing event and community we've So, all those changes are a little difficult for people. Their habit changes. Eat, well, one of them is to eat more plant-based food. Uh, another, uh, eat organic as much as you can because it, they don't use all these uh, fertilizers that harm the atmosphere. Uh, 
Okay. So it has much less impact on the planet if you eat organic food. So these are some of the projects we're working on. By March, we hope to really introduce them. And what we're inviting people to do is this. We're going to do some uh, team training online, uh, uh, especially on echo coaching. We're not going to charge for it. We, our aim is to get people out working in these teams. So our criteria is exchange. Exchange. So if you are willing to help us celebrate our 40th anniversary, uh, and be willing to donate at least two hours a week. Two hours a week uh, is what we think might create a, a beginning legacy. As teams all over the world, we're going to try and develop projects where we can get this information out to communities. Uh, we want to track it as much as possible. We're coaches, we measure everything. We want to see how it works. How can we actually expand these initiatives? So we want to do pre-training around March this year. If things go well, the formal start of all these various programs will be April. We'll run the projects for about six months. And hopefully do a completion phase in December and see how we've done. And then maybe uh, scale up phase two in January 2021. That's, that's our hope. So I'm willing to take your questions and thoughts at this point. As you hear, this is a call to action. If you're interested, and we'll put you on a mailing list, email list, and share as much as we can with you going forward. It's possible we'll hit some snags. Maybe we won't get our patent. More things like that. We won't get our patent. And uh, so we have to go step by step here. But we think these are pretty exciting projects. What are your thoughts? Well, I say, guys, that we were born at the right time. You may say, what? This is the right time? Well, it is. It's the right time for us to truly do what's possible to bring humanity together. Now is a time for a deep transformation on this planet, a real transformation. You all know spiral dynamics. It's time to move into the wholeness dynamic on this spot, in this planet. It's time for human beings to come together. And we are the ones who can really make a difference towards that very possibility. Now, you know, 
maybe I can end by telling you a story. It's a story that goes with the course I'm teaching. And most of you are in that course. Have you heard the story of Ellie? In um, Wonderland, it's not Wonderland, it's a Yellow Brick Road, Ellie walking down the Yellow Brick Road. How many of you know that story? Yeah, yeah. Well, think about it. For a long time, we were like Ellie in Kansas. Kansas is where she came from. A very left brain place, a very ordinary place. Farmers doing their job. And then the tornado appears. And Ellie sees it coming. And she runs into the house and she's trying to get her aunt to do something. There's a tornado coming. But her aunt is doing her accounting. She says, we're counting our chickens right now. Talk to me later. And so she's running around trying to get people's interest. Sounds a little bit like us right now. They're all out counting their chickens. And then, finally they wake up. And they all rush into the um, a hiding place underground. But Ellie goes back to find her dog. And she gets carried off and put down in a brand new realm. A realm of transformation. Where suddenly she can see with new eyes and hear with new ears. See, we are in that realm right now. We really are. We're like Ellie on the Yellow Brick Road. And in this class, many of you have been asking, well, what do I need? Maybe we're like the straw man who needs a brain. Uh, or the tin man that needs a heart. Or the lion that needs courage. Everybody's finding what they need to really move down the yellow brick road and move towards the possibility that's open for all of us to share the transformation of humanity because that's what it's about. We're the agents of a very big change right now. We were born at the right time, everyone. The time for us to find our own courage, our own heart, our own brain, our own meaningful way to make this happen. And I want to invite you to really step onto this yellow brick road and leave Kansas behind and make it happen. So thank you. Let's go home.